Hello learners, welcome back to my channel Sradhas Physics. In this part we will see the previous year question that is we are continuing 2021 question SSB Physics and here this is the part 5. In this part we will see the question number 21 to question number 30 with the solution we will see. So let us begin with our question. So let us start. So here the first question is question number 21 among the option given below which one is not a scalar quantity so it is indirectly asking that which one is a vector quantity so first of all the option is charge density you know the charge density rho equal to q by v that is the charge per unit volume and the current density it is you know the current density is a vector quantity and the next is the potential energy it is also a scalar quantity and the next is the electromagnetic energy density so this one is also the scalar quantity so only the current density this is the vector quantity now let us see the next question a faraday case is usually useful to shield the first option is any static electric field as well as electromagnetic radiation or any static magnetic field as well as the electromagnetic radiation or only static electric and static magnetic field or only electromagnetic radiation so basically a faraday case it is usually useful to shield any static electric field as well as electromagnetic radiation okay so this is for the static electric field and the electromagnetic radiation so this one is our correct answer okay now let us see the next question the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor is it is inversely proportional to the area of the plate or proportional to the separation between the plate or proportional to the area of plates as well as the separation between the plate or proportional to the area of the plates but inversely proportional to the separation so here in this question you have to answer that the capacitance of the parallel plate capacitor is how the relation so let me write the c equal to k epsilon naught a divided by d where k is the dielectric constant and epsilon naught is the permittivity of the medium and a represents the area that is the area of the plate and d is the separation between the two plates that is your d okay so here you can see c is directly proportional to a that is the area of the plate and c is inversely proportional to the distance between the two plate so here the correct answer will be this is proportional to the area of the plate and inversely proportional to the separation between the two now let us see the next question the next question is which one of the following statement is not true so it is not true has been asking any charged particle moving at a non-zero velocity it produces a magnetic field this is correct any charged particle when it will move in a non-zero velocity it means it has some velocity and a charged particle it will move with some velocity v so it will produce a magnetic field so you know the Lorentz force because of the magnetic field that is equal to q v b okay or q v cross v let me write q b cross v or this is q b b sin theta okay and the next option is any current carrying any current carrying where it produces a magnetic field so this is also true any current carrying where it will produce a magnetic field and the next option is force on a charged particle is non-zero if the particle moves along the magnetic field direction so this is your the wrong answer that is this is not true the next is a changing magnetic flux across a conducting wire loop it induces an electric field along the conducting wire and hence it generates a current so because of the magnetic flux so it will produce the current because of the induced electric field a changing magnetic field across a conducting wire loop it induces an electric field and because of this it will generate a current so this option is also correct so here in the question it is given that which one is not true so here this option is right that is force on the charged particle it will be zero if the particle moves along the magnetic field direction that is f equal to you know q v cross v just i have told q v cross v means this is your q v v sin theta so it is saying that force on the charged particle it will be non-zero if the particle moves along the magnetic field direction that is v and b they move in the same direction 
that is the angle between them is 0 degree. So in this case when theta equal to 0 sin 0 is 0. So the force will be 0. So in the question it is given in the option this is non-zero. So that's why this is not correct. Now the next question is a rheostat it can be used in a high voltage and or or high power DC circuit. The next option is in ideal for tuning a radio receiver it is, or in the next option it is better than a potentiometer for low power radio and the next option is it offers the advantages of having no inductance. So here the rheostat can be used in high voltage or high power DC circuit. Then the next question is a current loop has a magnetic current mu the torque tau in a magnetic field B is so this is the direct formula it is asking so tau equal to mu cross B tau equal to mu that is the magnetic moment cross the magnetic field. Now the next question is which one of the following should be minimized in an RF transmission line. The options are the load impedance, the load resistance, the line loss or the transmitter power. So to minimize sorry in an uh, RF transmission we should minimize the line loss. The next question is at the Brewster angle the angle between the reflected and the refracted rays is. So for the Brewster angle angle between reflected and refracted ray that will be 90 degree. These are your direct question. The next question is suppose a transformer it has a primary to the secondary tons ratio exactly 9 is to 1. The AC voltage at the primary is 117 VRMS. Okay, what is the voltage across the secondary? So, it has been asking that. So, primary to the secondary. So, the number of tons in NP divided by NS it is given that is equal to 9 by 1. And here also the primary voltage is given 117 volt. This is your primary voltage. And also you know the relation between the number of turns with the current that is NP by NS that is equal to IS by IP and for the voltage NP by NS that is equal to VP by VS. Okay. And here VS is asking what is the voltage across the secondary. Now I can write NP by NS that is equal to VP by VS. So here or we can write NP, is, NP by NS is 9 is to 1 or I can write 9 by 1 will be equal to 117 divided by Vs or this can be written as Vs will be equal to 117 divided by 9 or that will be 13 or 13 volt. So here the answer will be 13 volt. Okay. So you should remember that the ratio between the primary to the secondary coil will be directly proportional to the voltage in the primary to the secondary. So that is N is directly proportional to V. But here NP by NS equal to IS by IP that is N is inversely proportional to the current. Now the next question is from a point source the intensity of the light is proportional to the first is the distance from the source. The second option is the square of the distance from the source. Then the next is inverse square of the distance from the source or inverse of the distance from the source. So here for a point source from a point source the intensity of the light it is proportional to the inverse of the distance from the sorry it is inverse the square of the distance from the source okay square of the distance from the source it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source okay. So this is all for today in the next class we will see some more questions. Thank you all.